Hello, I'm Aisha and Jamal, and we are yet again live from the Turkish Cypriot Culture and Art Festival. And I'm very happy to be doing our special fashion feature tonight with Shadia Balakpaoğlu, who is our fashion designer, one of the most uh, famous fashion de designers in our Turkish Cypriot community. So thank you very much, uh, Shadia Abla, for coming um, onto the program. How are you tonight? I'm good, thank you. And thank you for having me on your program. Yeah, I mean, it's a real honor because, um, like I said, in our Turkish Cypriot culture um, and our community, you are a very, very well known uh, fashion designer. So I'm very honored to have you here um, to talk about Turkish Cypriot fashion. But before we go into that, can you tell our audiences a little bit of your background and how you got into the fashion industry? Sure. I came to England in 1953 only to perform a play for Turkish Cypriot community, Ali Koyla Jaher. Oh, okay. That was 1973, so a long, long time ago. And I decided to stay a little bit longer here and then go back. But because of the 94 crisis, I had to stay. Mm. And I had to stay, I had no money. I was in a very, very bad situation. I was illegally staying in this country and I had to earn a living. I had to survive in this country. And yes. the only places that would give me work was at that time, the fashion in the industry was really, really good in England. Mm. And I had to work in a factory. I didn't have any idea of what they were, how they worked. I did so some dresses for myself, you know, by hand, or I was very, very interested in clothing uh, to mm. dress myself, of course, not to the other people. And when I came, I started working in factories. When I saw a sewing machine, I had to scream and jump up the speed that it was. Mm. Uh, it was uh, frightening, but I had to learn it. I had to earn some money. I had to live in this country. So uh, as time went along and I lost uh, my hope that I couldn't return to Cyprus because, of course, uh, the situation was really bad in Cyprus, I thought if I'm going to do this job, I have to do it in a really, really good way and I have to study. So I started evening classes, pattern cutting, wow. braiding, this and that, mm -hmm. so I could become more successful. And uh, when I was uh, working in a factory, I used to design for my son. And I used to make little, little uh, waistcoats, trousers, dungarines, and all that. Um, and I used to hang them behind my machine. And one of the, uh, once uh, the owner of the, the actual company saw them and he, he said, what, what are these? Who, who done that? And I said, I did it for my son. Mm -hmm. And he said, can you design for us? And I said, but I'm not a designer, you know, I'm not. He said, yes, you are. So it started from there. I Then I went to other factories because that one was burnt down. Uh, and it was really, really hard times. I did uh, sample making. I couldn't go and study daytime because I needed the money. Yeah. And uh, I started making friends, family, some dresses, some, some dresses, blouses, everything. Yeah. But the wedding dress side started as when I took one of the family to have a made to measure wedding gown for her wedding to a well known dressmaker or designer, shall we say. And it didn't turn out, and she was shattered. She was crying. Uh, she didn't have any dress to wear, and she had one week to the wedding. Okay. And when I saw that rubbish wedding dress, I thought, but I can do a lot better than this. So I ran to the shops. I got the fabric. I stayed there at night, and I finished it beautiful, beautiful. My first wedding dress was really, really beautiful dress everyone was talking about it and then they started can you do mine can you do mine <laughs> I, can imagine. I can imagine what an amazing story that was. yes so and that's how by chance that's how i became um designer yeah dressmaker i mean yeah. i i won't say designer 
mm. because what's designer? It's a profession. It's dressmaking. Yeah. It's profession. It's creating. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, I started. I used to work in yeah. a factory, and I mm -hmm. used to work from home doing made-to-measure wedding dresses. Yeah. And then the mom started asking. The sister started asking. The, the bridesmaid wanted some dresses, and when I couldn't cope with all the orders, I had to give up my job and started doing uh, first from home. Then uh, when people came like midnight and any 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 time, you know, they they were really really har harassing me. <laughs> and I thought, no, I have to get a little place. Yeah. And. Um, then work from there because it wasn't really fair on my family yeah and i started uh, first my first one was in stoke newington no it wasn't it was in seven sisters road next okay. to finsbury park station yes your first shop my first shop was there and then stoke newington and then i my uh, I went to Hornsey road where my shop is now but i it was opposite the shop i rented a place there and then i had I bought when the business was really blooming. Uh, I bought the uh, the other, the actual shop that I own now. That you own now. That's called Shadi. Yeah, oh, yeah it's called Shadi. <laughs> the reason I the reason I uh, called it Shadi because when I was working at uh, these places, the factories and mm. these places, no one yeah. could pronounce my name. <laughs> they called me. Oh my yeah. God! So, uh, I mean. I remember they calling me Shilla, which it means uh, dog in, in Greek. And they called me uh, shy, shy, all these different. And I said, this is me. I can do this job. And this is my name. You have to pronounce my name correctly. Or yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. this is my name. This yeah. name is doing your dresses. <laughs> and that's I that. how I started. It's an amazing story. Like I said, obviously, because you... Um, you know, you, you sort of fell into it because you had to, you had to survive. I had to do and I think that's very inspiring for our youngsters out there that want to do something, is you've got to have that grit, you've got to have that perseverance, even in hard times, not to give up. And then someone actually saw your designs that you were doing for your family, and then from there, some a friend of yours needed help, and you thought to yourself, I can do better than this, and you designed this amazing wedding dress. I mean, what a story is absolutely yeah. amazing. This is what I've, I want. I've to never advertised do. my business. Mm. I've never advertised it. It's always word of mouth, always someone. So my dresses, my designs, they like it. They ask where from, mm -hmm. and 37 years in the business, I did not advertise it at all. I survived all those years without advertising because my job, my creations yeah. were my advertising. Yes, and we're going to look at your creations. We're going to have that um, show our audiences some of your creations. And I was quite lucky to uh, wear some of your creations as well for some. <laughs> so I've been very, very fortunate with that. I'm very honoured that I've been able to wear some of your dresses because they truly are very unique. Each and every one of them. It is. I've it's never. I made an effort. Yes. Very good. But if we link it back to Turkish Cypriot fashion, do you think over the ages? Has our culture influenced the way that we've dressed, do you think, as a no. community? No, I, it's nothing to do with culture. When you say Turkish Cypriot fashion, mm -hmm. we yeah. always, uh, we're always always westernized in our cities. Yes. Always. And uh, only in folk dancing and in villages, we had some uh, cultural or traditional uh, dresses, shall I say. Mm -hmm. or uh, out, outfits, outfits um, yeah. like um, Uzundon mm -hmm. in villages. They used to wear mm -hmm. long cotton breathable fabric, yes. uh, pants, and dress over that, and always mm -hmm. their aprons, and mm -hmm. their Yemenis on their head, yes. which they used to call chamber in uh, some yes. villages. Mm -hmm. yes. And when I, um, when I was studying, mm -hmm. and I went to Mausa yes. to study and I stayed with my uncle and his family and his mother-in-law used to live there and it was really, I was uh, astonished to see her wearing these uzundons yeah. with crochet lace at the bottom mm. and I thought, what a lovely thing, mm. you know, it was really pretty really sweet so when i went uh, when i was in theater 
and we are going to perform Ali Koleja hair, I designed Hatmala's uh, costume exactly like she was dressed up. I think mm -hmm. I was the first to introduce the Turkish uh, Cypriot uh, Puyko, the actual Cypriot folk clothing. Yes. Hatmala wore it first. Well, wore it first, your character. Yeah, That's with the basma brilliant. fabric, which is a cotton mm -hmm. with little prints on it. Yes. Uh, with apron, uh, with with that uh, uzun don, as we yeah. call it, the, the pants. And I was first to wear it, and then they put it to folk dancing. Yeah. After uh, I left the country. Folk dancing, you've been very uh, prominent with that as well. Um, you've designed for many schools and for many uh, performances. Shall we talk a bit about that, um, the folk uh, costumes. How did you sort of get into that and um, what sort of, uh, if, if you were to describe it, we're going to see some images as well, but if you were to describe it, what's the sort of traditional Turkish Cypriot dress for a boy and a girl? Uh, of course, uh, we are Muslims, so we, we've got some of the ideas being Muslim, like uh, coverings, head coverings, yeah. and for men, uh, dizlik. Mm. Uh, in another words, like a shalwar, this leg and in black and white, whatever and they used to wear these in uh, villages with uh, some uh, boots, leather boots. Yes, they used to call them chandar chismesi. <laughs> Fantastic! We're gonna see some chandar chismesi, and yeah. that was the trad traditional old costumes. Mm. Well, actually. They used to wear them, not not costumes. They used to wear them every day, of course. Yeah, like the men go to the land and you know farming. Yes, of course, women. Of course, when they when they went to the fields, mm. uh, that's how they used to go because those boots yeah. were very very strong. So they used to wear them. Mm. Uh, like the pictures here, you see uh, he's wearing wellings because we couldn't find the other. <laughs> but you can see white his leg. Yes, his shirt without collar. And the raised coat and the head headscarf. Well, the headscarf over there. The ladies, yeah, and the ladies they were wearing just under the knee dresses and those um, leggings or pants, whatever you call them, long pants, because yeah. it was usually in the villages women always worked in fields. So when they were bending and getting up, it was very safe. It's very very secure. Yes. Those things. So, yeah, because they'd have the shalvar on top. My nan used to tell me about it actually. And it's cotton and lace as well, combination is it with the material that they used to wear? Yeah, it wasn't shalvar. I mean, women never wore shalvar. Mm -hmm. Those are in Turkey. This okay. is what they used to wear. Just the, okay. these long, uh, long pants. pants. Okay, we're yeah. gonna like in Paphos, in Paphos, yeah. those villages, they used to wear them without the lace. Oh, okay. And usually they used to wear them in a striped cottons, like mm -hmm. white and blue or white and bl uh, black thick right. striped right. cottons, yeah. yes. But yeah. in uh, Karpas, it was just a plain color with lovely crochet uh, at the bottom. So really, from area yeah. to area, we've got certain dress types. Of course, of course, oh, it's still, of course like everywhere else, we've got a fashion in different That's true. Uh, areas in different things. So obviously, all of this knowledge, uh, you got involved with the Turkish schools, and we've seen some uh, of your amazing designs for, for the schools as well. And you've helped yes. out. I know firsthand how much you've helped, because it's very intricate and a very different. Before that, be yeah. yeah, before that, they asked me to design something for, I think it was Enfield School. Uh, the name I don't know. It was a school in Enfield, and mm -hmm. I did design for them. A beautiful, okay. really beautiful uh, things. They came to ask me to make it because I was a Turkish Cypriot. So they said, uh, "Could you make? We've got the budget. Can you?" I said, "No, I'll make it instead for the school mm -hmm. uh, for free because yes. this is my uh, help yeah. for the school." It was uh, they, everybody liked those uh, dresses. They were. I mixed the Turkish, the well, Turkish, yeah. Turkish Cypriot, and British culture all together, and I designed those dresses. That's what I love about your designs, uh, Shadia. Like, you have to because you live in England. You, yeah. have, you live in England. You originate yeah. from Turkey. You are Turkish, but yeah. you are Cypriot. Yes. So they were all mixture of those, and they were really lovely, lovely. Uh, 
costumes. Costumes. I think it's because you know the history, like you said, you know yeah. exactly what is appropriate for the uh, Turkish culture. That's right. That's right. And because yeah. of that, I think you're very good at amalgamating all these different cultures within your designs because some of the things that I've worn, I've felt that. I felt um, like um, there was something I wore, the black Aslan to, uh, top. Yeah. It was Victorian, but at the same time, the material was uh, very delicate, just like a separate culture. It was quite close. and It was just a, a real amalgamation. And I've never seen that. It's very, very unique. So you've definitely got this. Right. Amazing. I, I think love history, talent. yes. Yes, I love history. I mean, I I was really uh, doing a lot of um, Victorian dresses, mm. Victorian wedding dresses. Yes, and I was very good at that. Um, I love that history. Yeah, I was going to go on about the wedding dresses. What was your favorite type of designs? Because I have noticed with your wedding dresses that they do depict. Um, like a Victorian era or Elizabethan, like I do see that, you know, like with the cl classic uh, novels as well, like Pride and Prejudice, like there was this one outfit I think that I wore and you had the umbrella and you had the dress That's and it really right. reminded me of all the classic sort of novels. So were you ever influenced by, um, by all of those things? Um, I mean, I do love Victorian clothing mm. myself and uh, period clothing. Uh, yeah. But of course, I ha I had limited uh, things because I had to do whatever the customers asked me to do. You can't yeah. you can't tell someone to have Victorian if if she's very modern, of course. Mm -hmm. But whatever we did, we did to their. I mean, you have to make things for your customers to love it. Otherwise, you can't be successful. You have to put your heart in it. You have to put all your efforts into your work. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you can't be successful. They they have to trust you. They have to be hundred and one percent happy. Ninety nine percent is not good enough. Definitely. And, and usually, I manage that. Yeah, you have done very much so over the years as Turkish Cypriots. Obviously, you've had a lot of Turkish Cypriot customers. Um, has the fashion changed? Do you think, or do you think people are a bit more aware of their culture back home, or do you think it's more of a merge? How has fashion sort of changed within uh, the fashion? Always in Cyprus, uh, mm. their fashion is, as I say, European fashion. Whatever yeah. the fashion is here, and it used to go mm. there a, a year later. Whatever the fashion was in England, yes, a year or one and a half years later, it used to be fashion in Cyprus. Yeah. Now they catch up, of course, it's, it's uh, <laughs> internet and online things, yeah, they catch up and they're all we're all level, yes, <laughs> which is good. That's great. It means that we're communicating with each other. I think this yes. is what the festival is about, as well as that we communicate with each other, that we, um, you know, have links with Cyprus and with London. And you know, even through these times, we uh, are, you know, um communicating, we're using modern technology to actually, you know, connect, which is good. And that leads me on to my next question, collaborations with other designers, um, specifically Turkish Cypriot. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I know you've trained people up as well. Yes, of course. I trained so many people. They, I mean, a lot of uh, girls, not necessarily Turkish Cypriots, but uh, mm. them as well, of course. Uh, they all came for work experience. I never said no to anyone to come for work experience. I always. But I found out that these youngsters uh, today they come and they think, oh, beautiful dresses, beautiful designs, beautiful. I will sit there and I will draw and I will enjoy it. It's not that. It's very hard work. You have to do everything. So I, mean, I had girls that were staring on the ceiling when I said, do this and <laughs> do that, because it was too hard for them to do. Yeah. Um, if you want to do designing, my advice is that you have to start from one and then you walk work yourself up yes you have to learn everything about it otherwise yeah. you can't be successful mm -hmm. and as you say when you say with the other designers of course mustafa aslan Türk, which uh, he is the to me he is the best uh, turkish cypriot designer mm -hmm. um and he's very talented young man he's um he's as a character as well he is yeah. really really good character Mm -hmm. All clients love him. Um, he came to me when before he started uh, uni, and he said, "I want to learn something before I start." 
And I yeah. said, of course, you can come and we'll teach you. And he was so willing to do it. Yeah, he was hard working. He, he, I used to come home and he used to stay, stay in the shop doing his work and helping me as well. Mm. He wanted to learn everything. And at the end, he got everything. Yeah, <laughs> when I retired, I said, mm. that's it, you carry on. Yeah. And I've been very, like I said, very fortunate to wear some of his designs as well as your own. And um, I tell you, really amazing nice. shoots. I, I've, I've honestly felt amazed, amazed by some of his designs. The that's couture. Right. He the is design. very talented. talented. Yeah, and obviously his wedding dress is his design for many famous people, as oh, you yes. have, of yes, course. Yes. Um, but obviously you trained him up. And I think... Well, I mean, we were amazing. together, uh, if I'm not wrong, Hard seven work. years. Mm -hmm. He grew up in the shop. Yes. But I think that's what it is. You taught him that, you know, it's not just about having the ideas, but it's putting in that hard work. I think your he, work ethos is really good. He's very talented, very hardworking mm -hmm. and very good character, which you mm -hmm. can't find all these three, all of it in one person. But at least in this case, he's <laughs> got it all. <laughs> so he'll be, I mean, he's very successful and he'll be more. If this corona goes out of the way, he'll be... <laughs> Yeah, I know hard for all of us for the fashion yeah. industry, especially. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yes. Well, I mean, what What do you think about the future of Cypriot fashion? Where do you think it's going to go from here? Well, we catched up with Europeans now in Cyprus. There are universities; they do teach fashion design. Mm -hmm. And before, we didn't have any designers, of course. We what we had were terzis, yeah. seamstresses, dressmakers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but now they study as well. So, and we have got uh, quite few good designers in Cyprus, which they are very successful as well. Mm. Um, of course, we mustn't finish our program without talking about Hussein Chalayan. Yes, definitely. He is our, of course, uh, honor. He's the best designer, of course, and uh, we mustn't. The only thing is, when I'm saying all these things, yeah. um, to become a really, really famous designer, yeah. you need to spend a lot of money. You have to have loads and loads of money because all these fashion shows and everything, they cost a lot of money. And without yeah. sponsors, yes. you can't really get anywhere. Yeah. So that's why our designers are limited to what they can do. Mustafa chose to work and earn money instead of spending money. And I mean, he did a lot of shows. He did London Fashion Week. Yeah. Uh, he did other shows, uh, which was really, he was very successful. But the money that is involved, it's uh, scary. I know, it's very expensive. Yeah. You need huge sponsors yes. on us. And yeah, on apart from Hussein Chalayan, we've got uh, Rashid Balzabalı in Turkey. Yeah. He's very famous. Mm -hmm. Zirin Akıncı, Hasan Özyalçın. Tezezia, uh, Kurtarıcıoğlu, Ali Yahi, all these are Turkish Cypriot designers, which they are doing their best, and they're all good designers, all good kids. Yeah. I mean, it is amazing that we've been quite successful in the fashion industry, but like you said, and I very much support this, it is very difficult to um, survive in the fashion industry, and you have to make that choice. Do you want to go down the route of spending a lot of money on shows, or do you want to have a clientele? Yes. Do you, you want to have a name, or do yeah. you want to have money? That, yeah. That's all about that's, it. That's very good advice yes. for young fashion designers out yeah. there studying yes. currently. And it's really good to see that in Cyprus now, there are courses and people can get educated within the that's fashion right. It's That's right. In in every subject, in yeah. every subject, which we didn't have, we only had the highest yeah. one was Lisa, of course, in uh, high school. In, yeah. in my days, yeah. <laughs> uh, but, but now it's practical as well, isn't it? I mean, the fact is that you're saying you've got to work from uh, ground zero and work zero. your way up. That's and right. that's that's another experience as well. So you've got to sort of balance it out. And obviously, if you do want to go into the fashion industry, yes, you want to make a name for yourself, but you've got to earn a living. So I think you've posed lots of very interesting and worthwhile points for young people out there in our community who want to get into the fashion industry. But I do think, as well as all of those amazing people that you've mentioned i do think shows you up like that you are also one of those individuals you've um contributed to our community immensely not only through your designs um through your wedding dresses 
um, through the folk dresses, but you've actually helped our community as well through your charities. And you don't, I know you don't like to talk about it, but you've done a lot of things. You've gone abroad to Turkey and, um, you know, helped uh, children in schools. Um, you've done lots of projects, outreach projects. Um, for not only people in this country, but for people in Turkey as well, namely children. And I just wanted to mention that to our audiences as well, because I think that's very commendable, all the things that you've done. Uh, well, I mean, we do whatever we can. We do yeah. whatever we can to help others. If we are lucky enough to have more than the others, then we should help mm -hmm. others. That's, Definitely. I always believe that. Mm -hmm. And, and always of course, do. theatre as well, all the theatre uh, work that we've done as well. Theatre, <laughs> yeah, that's another. <laughs> that's, that's, another another, that's another program in itself. <laughs> Obviously, like you said, you designed for the shows as well, which is interesting because designing for a show and designing for a customer is, again, a very different thing, like of you said. It is. Yes, yes. Mm. As I said, I did it in the hardest way. Mm. That's why I did it the best way, because I had to. I had no other chance. I had to survive. Mm. But in this business, you have to be very honest. And your clients has, has to trust you. Yeah. And the rest comes. As I say, I, I managed to do it without an adver without mm. advertising. That's and brilliant. I'm very lucky. Uh, we're in our last minute now of our show. Is there any messages you'd like to give out to our Turkish Cypriot community and the community out there um, in London and Cyprus? Uh, about fashion, uh, yes. I would say if any of our youngsters want to become a fashion designer or fashion, a fabric designer or whatever, something to do with fashion, it's a hard work. It's not as easy as they think. They, they should know that they have to work really hard and they have to be honest. Uh, they have to work day and night, actually, yes. to, to be successful. Otherwise, they should choose other professions. Really, yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure and an honour to have it's you on. It's been a pleasure to be on your show, Aisha. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. That's it from us. Um, Shadia Bajola, thank you very much. Um, that's it from our fashion feature for tonight. Um, hope that you enjoyed it. Good evening from Eurogench TV.